here with David. David, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us where you're studying? Sure. Uh, my name is David Hagman, and I'm at Carnegie Mellon. I work with uh, George Lowenstein, um, particularly uh, interventions that governments can use or that firms can use to shape an environment for people. Wonderful. And tell us about your latest research question. <laughs> so in our most recent project, which uh, I just presented here, uh, we looked at behavioral interventions called nudges. So the government may set, for example, defaults on organ donations or end-of-life care, and we particularly looked at this end-of-life care decision, which is highly consequential, and there you can set a default of whether or not you want to get life-extending measures. And depending on what the default is, people will choose or will choose different options and seem to have different preferences. Great, and so what's wrong with the default? Are all defaults good? Well, so the problem is that there could be ethical implications. So imagine that the default is that you don't want life extending measures and now people won't get those. And so is this really reflecting people's true beliefs or are they sort of being tricked into making that choice? Manipulation, coercion, all these uh, things. Exactly, yeah, we exactly. Don't want to, we don't want to do that. So, so how do you solve this? And so what we thought was, what we really should do is just disclose that this effect is taking place so that we're actually defaulting you into some option. Nice, but if you disclose it, Will people not call the default? So that was the assumption, right? Uh, particularly in the UK, where they implement this, uh, they thought we just don't have to be transparent, otherwise it doesn't work. And it hasn't really been tested until now. And what we so you're saying basically the assumption is that if you tell people that there's a default, then the default will lose all of its power. And we, why would we even have a default if we have to tell people? That's exactly right, okay. yes. And so what we do is we disclose it, and we disclose it in a very neutral way. So we don't tell people this is a default because we recommend it. And we just say this is the default, and there may be other defaults. So and you're basically raising your arms and saying, hey guys, we have a default here. And then so they know before they're going to answer Exactly, okay. yes. And so then we look at whether this diminishes the effectiveness of this intervention. And it turns out in our data it does not. So the default is just as effective uh, if you disclose it than if you don't. Yes. And how did you specifically test this with end of life? And so we gave people a hypothetical choice uh, about their end of life care. And we asked them about a very general range. So what would you like your overall goal of care to be? And we also asked them very specific about individual interventions. And it turns out on the general question, where people probably have strong preferences one way or another, the default just didn't make a difference. So whether or not it was disclosed, people indicated what they really liked. But for the individual questions, people probably weren't so sure. Like, uh, do you want to be connected to a ventilation tube? That's a very difficult question. And so people may not be sure. And then the default can have some of them. Okay. And then did the transparency of telling people impact that? So in a very specific, when you said, do you want to um, have this type of life support uh, without the default or without the transparency versus with the transparency? And there was no difference. There was no difference. Yeah. Okay. So was there any difference in the general condition? And it was not different. No difference. Yeah. So telling people that there's a default, at least in the life support condition, right. doesn't seem to have an effect on the use of details. No. Exactly. Nice. And of course we could imagine a kind of disclosure that actually increases the effect of the default. So for example, we could like in real world policy, there's usually a reason why something is a default. Yep. So imagine firms may set a default as to factor authentication. So here the reason for such a default is to make your account more secure. And now of course when you give people a disclosure about this, what you say is this is the default because it makes your account more secure. And now we would think that disclosure actually increases uh, the use of it. So pulling out the implicit default recommendation, the social norm, and even its apparent default, and even telling people why you're defaulting. Exactly. Nice, so that may even have a bigger effect than default by itself. Yes. Cool, and will you be testing that soon? Uh, hopefully that's the next step, yes. Nice, great. Thanks, David, and um, we'll default uh, to having another conversation soon. Yeah, thanks very much.